welcome everyone this is SPM Kumar again. So, last class we have uh, discussed about absorption and today's uh, session we are going to discuss about uh, excretion how the drug is being excreted from the body. So, in the biopharmaceutics all the parameters pharmacokinetic parameters like adsorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion are dealt in detail. So, once the drug is taken into the body so there are two things one is absorption phase next is elimination phase. So, the elimination phase consists of two aspects drug elimination is consisting of two aspects one is metabolism the other one is excretion. So, the drug once it has shown its effect reaches to the liver where it undergoes metabolism. So, a non-polar drug is converted to polar drug with the help of liver. Once the drug is converted to polar form, it is now water soluble. Now the kidneys can successfully handle these polar substituents to eliminate outside of the body. So, the purpose of this elimination phase is to remove the drug away from the body. So, otherwise all the drugs can cause cumulative toxicity. In order to avoid the cumulative toxicity, there are two principal eliminating organs. One is liver. So, only our kidney is designed to eliminate only the polar drugs but not the non-polar drugs hence liver comes into the play liver in liver we have biotransformation where there are phase 1 reactions and phase 2 reactions these together will convert the non-polar drug to polar form so once it is converted to polar water soluble form our kidneys can effectively eliminate the drug outside of the body so today we are going to see all these elimination aspects so where we are going to see only about the renal excretion so let us first study what is meant by elimination. So, drug elimination refers to irreversible removal of the drug. So, once the drug is removed from the body, it is not going to come back, it is completely going outside of the body. So, drug elimination is irreversible removal of drug from the body. So, uh, whatever the route you are uh, giving, so respect to the route, our kidneys or other eliminating organs like skin or liver etc. they are going to eliminate through all the possible routes either through the skin or through lungs or through sweat pores they are going to be eliminated from the body. So, it is mainly divided into the excretion is mainly divided into renal excretion. So, mostly our drugs are eliminated from the kidneys. So, otherwise if the kidneys are not going to eliminate them, other organs together liver, lungs, skin etc. they are going to eliminate the drug away from the body. So, uh, let us uh, dig into the details now. So, let us have a focus on renal excretion because majority of the drugs are eliminated by renal route. So, let us have a uh, discussion on kidney and how it is going to eliminate the drugs from the body. So, here is our uh, renal system where we have this uh, two kidneys which uh, will comprise of nephrons. Each kidney is consisting of one millions of nephrons. All these nephrons are the structural units of the kidney where they are going to have this glomerular filtration tubular secretion and tubular reabsorption. So, by these three phases our drug will be eliminated from the body. So, once all that uh, filtration process is done, it is coming into the collecting ducts and all the collecting tubules will be opening into the renal pelvis which will open to ureters will be collected in the urinary bladder where it is passing outside of the body in the form of urine. So, you know all these things in the anatomy itself. So, this is just a revision regarding this anatomical aspects of the kidney. So, what are the drugs which are possibly getting eliminated from the body? So, those drugs which are water soluble. So, kidneys can handle only water soluble or polar forms of drugs. So, hence liver will convert the non-polar forms to polar forms such that kidneys can easily handle that drug to get eliminated from the body and these should be non-volatile. So, volatile forms of drugs like general anesthetics or inhalational anesthetics they are removed from the lungs. So, only the uh, drugs which are non-volatile will be eliminated from the kidneys. So, the drugs to be eliminated by the kidneys they should have small molecular size preferably they should be having less than 400 kilo daltons. Why? More than this size 400 kilo daltons or nephrons cannot be handled the drug. So, hence 400 kilo daltons is very uh, uh, very stringent criteria enough such that the drug should be eliminated from the body uh, 
otherwise it is not going to get diffused out of the kidney and those drugs which are metabolized slowly can cause cumulative toxicity hence the kidneys comes into play and eliminate them from the body so what is the basic functional unit of the kidney the basic functional unit of the kidney is nephron so each kidney is consisting around 1 million of nephrons as the age progresses the functional nephrons will be slowly reducing so which will lead to renal compromise in the elderly patient so this is our kidney and the structures the transfer section of kidney showing all the structures of the kidney so we have this cortex medulla capsule so which will finally open eventually open into this ureter so each kidney is consisting of a nephron each kidney is consisting of a nephron which will comprise of the following parts so if you see you look at the diagram so this is the structure of nephron so in the nephron we have this glomerular so this cup shaped thing is Bowman's capsule in the cup shaped Bowman's capsule we have a network or tuft of capillaries called as glomerulus so the one which is entering into this tuft of capillaries is called as efferent arteriole and the one which is coming out is called as efferent arteriole so the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule together they are called as malfeasia capsule so glomerular filtration will be taking place in this tuft of capillaries so these will open into the, this all the remaining part is the tubule which is divided into so since this is in the proximal part this is called as proximal convoluted tubule so below which to have this counter current flow we have a uh, u-shaped pin hairpin loop structure which is called as henley's loop there is a hairpin loop structure called as henley's loop so after which we have a distal convoluted tubule this distal convoluted tubule will be opening into the collecting tubules so all these collecting tubules will open into the renal pelvis which will open to ureter then urinary bladder and finally to urethra and where the urine will be passed out from the body so this is the structure anatomical structures involved in the kidney associate and their associated structures so how this uh, glomerular uh, filtration or this excretion of the drug is carried out in the kidney so we have this glomerulus and the tubule is uh, divided into proximal convoluted tubule distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts or collecting tubules as you can see the blood flow is the highest in glomerular glomerulus which acts as a driving force for filtration the higher blood flow in the glomerulus acts as a driving force for filtration and eventually when it is passing through proximal tubule or this collecting tubules or distal tubules the blood flow is slowly declining so this uh, difference in pressures will help in filtration of the substance so uh, the whatever the drugs or water so it is first undergoing filtration later on they will be undergoing this reabsorption so mostly most of the reabsorption will occur in proximal tubule and the remaining partial fraction is going to to get reabsorbed in the lateral distal part of the nephron so what is uh, the processes the three steps involved in the urine formation the three steps involved in the urine formation are glomerular filtration active tubular secretion and active or passive tubular reabsorption so uh, let us come one by one so first one is glomerular filtration so what are the kinds of drugs which are getting eliminated by this step so glomerular filtration it is a non-selective process so it's not a carrier mediated one it's a non-selective so any drug whose molecular weight is less than the four kilodaltons 400 kilodaltons can uh, get filtrated by this route it is a unidirectional pathway so once the there is this efferent arterial and which enters into the tuft of capillaries called as glomerulus which is encapsulated in the Bowman's capsule all these tuft of capillaries will open into the efferent arteriole so if you can see the diameter of the efferent arteriole is very high when compared to the diameter of the efferent arteriole so this results in a congestion this results in pressure buildup this delta or change in pressure p2 minus p1 acts as a driving force like a diffusion so uh, whatever the uremic substances present in the blood will get filtered into this Bowman's 
capsule so it forms a mesh like structure so that mesh like cellular structures will filter out the drugs or uremic substances outside of the body so there is a unidirectional flow so that means the drugs are flowing only into the bowel capsule but not the reverse there is no reverse flow it flex into back into the glomerulus cavity so uh, both ionized drugs and unionized drugs can be filtered by this glomerular filtration so only things which do not get filtered in this glomerular filtration step is blood cells whatever the proteins plasma proteins like albumin globulin histidine and blood cells rbc wbc or platelets they do not get filtered out remaining all will be filtered out by this glomerular filtration so the gfr rate is for a normal adult it is 120 ml per minute so if you do the calculation for minute itself we are having this 120 ml of output so within 10 minutes we have 1.2 liters of output but no not uh, no no human is excreting 1.2 liters for every 10 meters so that means majority of the filtrate is getting reabsorbed so that's our second step second step is reabsorption so before going into the second step let us write some more uh, notes characteristic notes about this glomerular filtration so it promotes retention of anionic drugs so due to this uh, Uh, due to this mechanism glomerular glomerulus mechanism charged especially anionic drugs they will retain but remaining drugs they get eliminated from the body so gfr uh, in order to know the function or functional level of the kidney we can estimate the gfr by using creatinine inulin mannitol or sodium thiosulfate these substances will help in estimation of glomerular filtration rate so what is the next step next step is tubular secretion and tubular reabsorption so tubular secretion is there are some substances like hippuric acid hippuric acid these substances they are not present in the blood so they are secreted by the kidney so uh, uremic compounds they will undergo a metabolic pathway such that they are producing new compounds which are easy to be eliminated from the body as such they can't be eliminated some compounds they'll convert into other forms such that they are secreted into the urine and they are eliminated from the body so one such example is hippuric acid so it is eliminated from body by active tubular secretion even some drugs like penicillin so these are the examples of drugs like uric acid acid salicylic acid penicillin sulfates etc they get eliminated from the body by this tubular secretion so here there is a pg set bit so if you do not want your penicillin to be excreted out from the body you want to have a longer action you can give a combination of probenicid with penicillin so what does this do so probenicid will get eliminated instead of penicillin so thereby the t half of the penicillin will be increased only probenicid will be eliminated outside of the body so that's why probenicid penicillin is a long acting penicillin when compared to penicillin v or penicillin g so there are some other examples like morphins these are also eliminated by this active tubular secretion so uh, this there are some other characteristic points to be remembered about active tubular secretion so what are they it is unaffected by urinary ph changes or protein binding usually when the urinary ph changes the extent of ionization of the drug also changes which may affect the excretion but this active tubular excretion since since we are calling this as active process it is an energy dependent process all energy dependent process are independent of the ph or protein binding no matter how far it is binding or how uh, bad is the ph it is going to get eliminated from the body so active tubular secretion can be measured by using para amino hippuric acid since the only substance which is excreted physiologically from the body by active tubular secretion is hippuric acid we can measure whether the ats is happening successfully or if there is any renal compromise by using this compound para amino hippuric acid so it can serve as an index to see how far, how good is this ats occurring so uh, usually so glomerular filtration rate it is occurring at a rate of 120 ml per minute so this is occurring at a minute of uh, the, at a rate of 600 to 700 ml per minute so there are some examples of drugs which are being eliminated from the body so as i have said previously penicillin and probenicid combination so we can 
prevent the secretion of penicillins by using a combination with probenicid which actively undergoes excretion instead of penicillin so these are some other examples by active tubular secretion so after secretion the principal step one more principal step by renal excretion is tubular reabsorption so the substances like glucose uh, and uh, other substances uh, their important electrolytes are uh, getting reabsorbed by this root uh, which is called as passive active or passive tubular reabsorption why is reabsorption very essential so as i have said previously glomerular filtration rate is 120 ml per minute so that's a huge lot of volume lost so such amount of volume should never be lost from the body so hence our body is designed in a way that 90% of the glomerular filtration rate 90 to 99% of the glomerular filtration volume is reabsorbed so most of the volume which is getting filtered it is getting reabsorbed especially the vital compounds like glucose they are getting reabsorbed so passive process doesn't require energy whereas active process they require energy so the substances which are getting eliminated by active process that means they require energy are glucose uric acid electrolytes vitamins amino acids so all these substances are essential things which to be which have to be remained in the body hence body is uh, compensating by by reabsorbing all these substances next so the passive process as the name is suggesting this is an energy independent process it does not require energy so exogenous materials uh, whatever uh, the substances which are having uh, high lipophilicity or polarity or with different ionization potential they are going to eliminated by this passive process so there are certain parameters which has to be which have to be remembered that may affect the renal excretion so what are they so ph so when uh, usually the urinary ph may vary from uh, slightly acidic ph to neutral to basic ph 4.5 to 7.5 so that means not every drug behaves in the same manner in every patient there is some intra subject variability where does this variability come from this variability come from the ph ph present in the urine so usually the food we take the time of the drug administration or the co administration of drug sometimes a drug may be taken with uh, analgesics or sometimes a drug may be taken with antacids so all these things may change the urine ph so there are some examples here say for example carbohydrates consumption of carbohydrates will result in production of pyruvic acid and lactic acid both of them are acidic compounds so obviously it can increase the urine ph by producing alkaline metabolites these lactic acid and pyruvic acid can undergo other pathways can produce bases and can increase the urinary ph and proteins proteins they are finally metabolized as amino acids amino acids obviously being acidic in nature they will reduce the urinary ph and certain drugs like sodium bicarbonate or acetazolamide they also cause alkalinization of urine ph so simply remember one universal thumb rule the thumb, thumb rule is is like dissolves in like like dissolves in like say for example acidic drug will be dissolved in acidic medium basic drug will be dissolved in basic medium and ion unionized drugs will be absorbed whereas ionized drugs are not absorbed ionized form of drugs are not absorbed so just remember the thumb rule such that uh, we can come across all these points we can remember thoroughly all these points so uh, what are they so very weak acids are very weak bases they are uh, reabsorbed independent of urinary ph since they don't have strong acidic ph or strong basic ph since they are very weak they are excreted very easily and weak acids whose ph is greater than 8 and whose uh, bases whose ph is less than 6 they are unionized at urinary ph hence they are absorbed as i have said previously unionized forms they are better absorbed so being in an ionized state they will be reabsorbed back into the systemic circulation whereas strong acids or strong bases they remain ionized so as i have said previously if it is ionized so they can't stay properly they can't get uh, reabsorbed they will be excreted excreted outside of the body and whose ph is between 3 to 8 and 6 to 12 the reabsorption 
absorption depends upon the pH of the urine. So, urinary pH affects only if the acid is acids pK is 3 to 8 or the base pK is 6 to 12. Rest of all, it depends on the above parameters. Next. So, urinary flow. So, uh, reabsorption of the certain drugs like say for example polar drugs. So, reabsorption is an affected by urine flow whether it, the urine flow is high or low. Being a polar drug it is water soluble and it will be easily eliminated from the or uh, reabsorbed from the body. Next. Drugs with reabsorption is pH sensitive. See certain drugs they have uh, pH dependent behavior say some they stay in ionized form some they stay in unionized form so such a uh, ionized or unionized state can affect the reabsorption so urinary flow increases with forced diuresis so if you are administering a diuretic like mannitol or uh, mannitol glycerin or any any osmotic diuretics can cause forced diuresis which increases excretion of the drug furosemide all these drugs can increase the excretion of drugs so there is a uh, uh, graph there is uh, these values which are very important for a clinical pharmacist whether to go with the administration of drug or withhold the uh, withheld the absorption of the drug so what are they so if the clear creatinine clearance and drug ratio are zero the drug will be filtered as well as reabsorbed completely examples of such drug is glucose and there is there are certain drugs whose creatinine clearance and drug ratio is between 0 to 1 so those drugs are filtered but only reabsorbed partially so if you are giving 100 mg of drug 50 mg of the drug uh, all the 100 mg will be uh, filtered and only 50 mg will be reabsorbed partially it will be reabsorbed. So, whereas the drugs having the ratio of 1, they are filtered but not reabsorbed. So, that means they will be eliminated rapidly from the body and whose ratio is greater than 1, they are filtered and secreted but they are never going to get reabsorbed. Whose ratio is equal to 5, then it is equal to plasma fluoride. So, there is only one uh, case scenario which holds good for this rule that is para immunohypuric acid. Rest of all will not follow that criteria. So, this is also a graph say for example, the plasma concentration of a, the relationship between plasma drug concentration and rate of excretion. See, uh, there, are, there are three kinds of behavior. So, plot number one, drug is excreted by filtration. So, there is this concentration dependent kinetics. So, both of them are perfectly correlated with each other, perfect positive correlation. So, that means higher the plasma drug concentration, higher will be the rate of excretion. So, this is category number one. So, what is category number two? So, it is those drugs which are filtered as well as reabsorbed. So, if you can see, this is a curvature of the line. So, that means higher the plasma concentration this is a saturated related kinetic so the rate of excretion is not exactly proportional it is initially having a linear relationship later on it is having a little curvature a negative slope of curvature it occurs due to the saturation kinetic similarly those drugs which are filtered and secreted also they behave in an opposite manner so they are also carrier dependent process once the carriers are saturated this process is going to get hindered or inhibited so which may affect the excretion so uh, what are the factors affecting this renal excretion so what are some other factors so uh, the distribution higher the protein binding of the drug lesser will be the excretion of the drugs all these points are uh, boiled down to this fact so we can remember these facts how the drug can be uh, affected in its uh, excretion from the body so blood flow to the kidneys so, higher the blood flow higher will be the excretion of drug from the body so uh, thus there are some biological factors for example females have lesser excretion rate newborns have uh, too little too uh, too much less excretion rate 30 to 40 percent less than the normal adults and old age depend due to the renal compromise or poor functionality of the kidney it may also affect the glomerular filtration rate and tubular function so uh, all these things has to be kept borne in mind in order to administer the drug and uh, decide whether the drug is going to accumulate in the body or excrete from the body so there are also certain uh, disease states like renal dysfunction acute kidney injury or 
for chronic kidney disease. In these conditions, the number of functional glomeruli are reduced, which may affect the excretion. So, uremia, there is a condition where all the uric uremic toxins such as uric acid, urea, creatinine, blood urea, nitrogen will get elevated which is causing uremia. In that case, the glomerular filtration rate is impaired which may affect the excretion. Even half-life when the drug is getting accumulated in the body, its half-life will be increased. So, so same slide so let us uh, move on to the next slide common causes of kidney failure so we are uh, now discussing about the disease states which are affecting the renal excretion so here are some conditions where it can lead to kidney failure conditions such as pyelonephritis if there is an infection or inflammation to the kidneys it which can cause kidney failure or hypertension hypertension is a silent killer so higher the number of years the patient is living with that hypertension it may affect the renal arteries and which will result in stenosis which will eventually lead to the kidney failure and diabetes mellitus due to the high osmotic load of glucose in the renal nef nephrons so it may result in damage to the renal arteries and eventually lead to the kidney failure and some drugs iatrogenic causes some drugs can cause the kidney toxicity especially the drugs belong to the category of aminoglycosides streptomycin canamycin gentamicin can cause nephrotoxicity can cause kidney damage when used for a prolonged period of time and hypovolemia so if the patient is subjected to dehydration, sunstroke or not properly having the lifestyle dietary habitats. It can result in hypovolemia and can cause kidney failure and nephroallergens. So there are certain compounds which are specifically binding to the nephrons and can cause kidney damage. So uh, this is one example malaria. So there are some um, malarial metabolites which can uh, cause damage to the kidney and can affect this renal excretion. So uh, renal impairment. So renal impairment can not only affect this excretion but also causes the following discrepancies. It can affect the body fluid balance, it can affect the electrolyte balance or it can cause impairment of kidney function. Uh, the kidney function may get altered. Uremia. So, all the kidney functions, one of the important function is to eliminate the uric metabolites, waste metabolites from the body. So, accumulation of this metabolites, waste metabolites in the body causes uremia and the drug distribution and elimination is altered which will affect the next dosage regimen. So, uh, the urine function or the kidney function can be estimated by using this uh, glomerular filtration rate. We can use creatinine, inulin or other substances to measure the glomerular filtration rate. Higher the glomerular filtration rate, higher or better is the kidney function. Lower the GFR, bad is the kidney function. So, obviously, you have to withhold the drug dosage, otherwise it is going to cause toxicity. So, creatinine clearance. So, apart from a glomerular filtrance, a filtration rate, we can also use creatinine clearance using inulin, etc. to estimate the extent of kidney function. Higher the values, better is the kidney function. So, we can estimate the creatinine clearance by using any of these formulas. So, we can uh, estimate this uh, renal function or uh, creatinine clearance using the extent of creatinine secre secre secretion and the serum creatinine concentration. If you measure the ratio between these two variables, the creatinine uh, clearance can be obtained. So, here are the values and their interp interp interpretation. So, higher the value, better is the kidney function. Lower the value, severe is the kidney damage which can result in uh, impairment of drug excretion. So, accordingly, you can use the formulas to adjust the dose to the patient. So, patients with the end stage renal disease, etc., they require elimination of the uremic phase as well as suppose there is a patient who have taken the drug accidentally or there is a drug poisoning, we can use dialysis. So, this dialysis can be uh, done by peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis. In the peritoneal dialysis, we will use peritoneum as the semi-permeable membrane to remove the waste materials. Whereas in the hemodialysis, there is a uh, 
catheter placed into the veins where the blood is connected to a dialysis machine which will remove the uremic waste and the filtered blood will be repumped again into the vein into the body such that the kidneys function is replaced by dialysis machine so higher the number of cycles of dialysis performed higher are the chances of anemia to the patient because uh, how, no matter how nicely these processes are done they may affect the blood cell production or it may cause anemia so uh, here are the uh, methods uh, what the steps involved in the peritoneal dialysis where peritoneum will be used as a semi permeable membrane to remove the waste uremic waste so uh, similarly there is also hemodialysis this is the most effective one when compared to peritoneal dialysis but it is uh, uh, expensive and it is time taking labasum and cause discomfort to the patient so hemodialysis so the here are some uh, parameters so water solubility whatever the water insoluble drugs they are not metabolized or they are not removed from the body so protein binding the drugs which are undergoing protein binding they cannot be eliminated from the body so higher the molecular weight they will not be eliminated or excreted from the body so drugs with higher volumes of distribution also may not be properly eliminated from the body so there are some uh, statistics and numbers how this uh, dialysis and uh, uh dialysis process is affecting so uh, removal of drugs it depends upon the hemoperfusion higher the hemoperfusion higher will be the removal of drugs from the body so uh, finally uh, i want to conclude uh, this uh, discussion by the point that excretion of the drug is very important otherwise it can cause cumulative toxicity so the major uh, majority of the drugs are being excreted by renal root and there are also non renal roots like hepatic excretion biliary excretion some drugs they are excreted by biliary excretion volatile drugs they are eliminated from the body by the lungs those drugs which are uh, eliminated through skin are the drugs which are getting liberated into the sweat so with that we concluded about this renal elimination in the next topic we are going to see about biotransformation thank you